Okay, y'all, so I just watched the trailer for the American Society of Magical Negroes, and i just like to say that we need to wake Harriet Tubman back on up. <laughs> we need to wake Harriet Tubman right back on up. Um, These niggas done lost the plot. Now, real quick, if you're looking for some Magical Negroes for real, <laughs> make sure you check out my series. I published the first book back in 2020. It's called Zaraxia, Wrath of the God King. Links will be in my description. It comes in ebook form as well as audiobook form. I'm working on the sequel. I'm hoping to release it next year. Here is an excerpt of it. Yeah, you can pause to read if you really want to get into it. You know what I mean? The sequel is already twice as long as the book I've already self-published. So yeah, the series is definitely coming along. But yeah, check out the first book it's the first one in the series so go easy on me i was just setting everything up you know what i mean figuring things out but either way it has a 4.9 star rating on amazon so yeah you should get into it <laughs> all right now before any of y'all talk about oh well you're just mad y'all are just mad at this trailer because you don't know what the concept of the magical negro in film and media whatever is and so i'm just like let's just get that out the way right now okay um i know what it is we're gonna explain it in a second um, but I think that the concept of the magical Negro in film could really be analyzed and dissected in so many interesting ways. But this movie, in my opinion, will not be a movie that does that. <laughs> Okay, so, and also, I think that if you have the name Negro in your title in 2023, like, you better come hard with it. Like, you better let, you better gag me, girl. Like, you know what I mean? You better give it to me. And to me, based off this trailer, this this shit didn't do it for me so before we get into it the magical negro is a trope in american cinema television and literature this character is a supporting stock character who comes to the aid of white protagonists in a film magical negro characters often possessing special insight or mystical powers have long been a tradition in american fiction we've seen it over and over in film right even if you did not know that this was the specific name for it it was popularized in 2001 by spike lee um so like if even if you didn't know this specific name you know like that one character who doesn't have a personality doesn't have a plot of their own you barely know their first name but they're there every time you don't know shit about what's going on in their life girl like you have no idea what their problems is <laughs> it doesn't matter right because this black character is only there in this tv show in this movie and this whatever um just to help the protagonist move along and that's it like we know that so when i first found out about this movie and or at least just saw the title i was like okay you know it's kind of taken aback a little bit by the title negroes all in it but i was like okay this could be really cool if they satire it up and just really give it to me you know if they give it to me then i'll be okay but now we get this full trailer i don't know this is the first time i'm seeing it something dropped today and i'm seeing i'm just like girl it's not giving me when i say it's not giving me nothing i'm saying it's not giving me nothing so we follow this light skin named aaron and justice smith he's been in a lot of stuff he's a working actor well-known actor so he's playing this guy named aaron right and he can feel white people's discomfort we learn we hear in the trailer watching you walk through a room full of white people was the most painful thing I've ever seen. And we got to see him walking through a group of his relatives. <laughs> <laughs> a group uh, i mean like he ain't never seen him before he, he walking through he says sorry over here while he passes somebody probably his auntie or something <laughs> sorry, sorry i'm so sorry girl um so he gets recruited david said <laughs> david said okay we gotta get you in there girl so aisha over here she said welcome to the american society of magical negroes so the idea behind this whole thing is that white people feeling uncomfortable will lead to black people being in danger so what we have to do as magical negroes is keep them happy and that will keep us safe and you know this is one of the issues with the movie to me so far is this i immediately was like okay so the trope of the actual trope of magical negro is that they these these black characters come to the aid of these white characters and help them accomplish the goals and whatever they do and whatever you know what i mean help them on their way they don't have a personality like i said they they're a husk of a character they're barely a character right they don't have a plot line so <laughs> really they don't so their only purpose is to help the white protagonist so the trope is not that the characters have to keep the white characters happy or else the white character is going to turn against the i don't know it's just like okay you're trying to do this movie on uh the magical negro and you're changing the very premise of you know what i mean that is built upon in the first 
it just felt weird. And then to change it in that way where it's like, we have to keep them happy or else they gonna turn against us or it's like, we ain't safe. It's just not giving nothing. I don't know. It's not giving, nothing. I don't like that change at all. I don't know if I'm explaining myself well with that, but I mean, it was the best I could do, child, this brain. <laughs> she, she be trying to work. Okay, so his first client to keep happy, or his first uh, master, uh, comes along, <laughs> comes along. His name is Jason, and I guess he's interested in this white girl or whatever non-black girl. Before y'all try me, but non-black girl, whatever, Lizzie. Uh, but Aaron is as well, obviously. So I guess the point of this whole thing is that if he can break out of this magical Negro slave trade, <laughs> he'll get to defeat the magical Negroness of it all and be with his non-black queen. Jason later thinks that Aaron is trying to set them up, and Aaron is like, "Wait, no, wait a minute now. I want my my <laughs> non, I want my non-black queen to myself. Like, you gotta have to." Go, you gonna have to do something else, Massa. That's what he said. We all know, according to his magical Negro society rules, he actually needs to be setting them up. He actually needs to be setting them up and making sure that Jason ends up with Lizzie. Aaron was told that if you don't put Jason's uh, feelings first, if you don't put this white man first, uh, <laughs> everybody else's magic will fail. Like, I guess the um, American Society of Magic, Magical Negroes magic will fail. So I guess we're to presume that he, like this movie will be about him breaking everybody out of their magical Negro station, right? By using the power of the swirl life to set him free from slavery. Like, girl, I'm so tired. And then you got this character there talking about, I know this one of y'all's turned against the society. It's just like, girl, and just being a whole entire trope by herself. I just, and I guess they're supposed to be tropes. Like they're supposed to be magical Negroes and stuff. But I, at the same time, I just think that this entire shit is very palatable to white audiences and white centering and very weird and to me it's very lazy i'm just like if y'all can have if y'all gonna have negroes in the title you need to come way harder than this like i don't know like what could have been cooler was if we had magical negro characters actually waking up from the matrix of being magical negro characters in the first place and then fucking update films or giving their stories totally different endings i don't know like it's just it's just so cheap to me it's just like okay another light skin chasing a white girl like I am so tired. And like I said, I think the entire concept of uh, magical Negroes and these empty characters who are who only exist to check off, like barely check off a diversity quota, but only exist to help the white protagonists reach their goal. They're, that's their only um, purpose in the story. I think that entire concept could you could you could spend years analyzing that shit and dissecting it making cool stories based off of it i just think that this was very cheap and just very tired and bored and we're just so tired of seeing this shit especially because like we just be so hungry for something that you know goes against the grain does something different and i think that these movies really think that they're going to like they really think they're doing something different and it's like, no, what would be different is if we don't have a light skin chasing after a white woman in a movie with the, with the word Negroes in it. Like, that's what would be actually innovative. We've seen this shit over and over and over before. It's not in, it's not challenging. It's not, it's not innovative. It's not, you know, gonna make people shaking their boots. It's not gonna make them think about no shit. It's not even at the very, it's, it's, we've seen this shit before. We've seen, it's so boring and tired. And then to latch on to the idea of like, oh, maybe this movie will be really analyzing or just to latch onto the vocab, the concept of the magical Negro and not do anything with that shit or to give us this with it. It's just like, girl, you could have really been a barrier breaker. You could have been one of those girls. Like you could have been, you know, you could have really challenged us. And instead we got this weird corporate looking shit. I just, I don't know how, and I know the entire world is corporate, whatever, but I, you know what I mean by when something feels corporate and stale, it, it feels unimaginative, it feels, girl, like we've done this before, it feels like we're not, we, it, oh, girl, I guess I'm just disappointed because like we really could have had something, like we really could have done something. And like I said, even, I, I think some people think that we expected, oh girl, it's gonna be wizards and riding broomsticks. And even if it wasn't that, even if it, yeah, that would've been cool. Even if it wasn't that, even if it wasn't actual magic, like you could've gave us more than this, girl. 
You could you could you could have kept us watching this. I ain't feeling it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I ain't feeling it. <laughs> but let me know what y'all think. Love y'all so much, and I will catch y'all later. Peace.